Hold on now. Let me get things together. Sorry, I'm running a little late, guys. Welcome in. Welcome in. Let the notifications roll out. How's everyone's night? Hello, Zen Ginger, Silver Creek Aquatics, Nano Aquarium Guy, Aqua Garden Zen, 3G, Sage P, what up? I was able to meet her at Fishtoberfest and her husband. They are really cool people, man. They're really chill. But how is everyone doing? We do have our flower whore next to us. And he is just super sassy today. Super, super sassy. Love this guy. But uh, let me know how the audio is. Hopefully it's all right. Flowerhorn is growing. Yeah, he's growing slowly but surely. Aqua Garden Zen is painting. Coo, coo, coo. Audio, video, good. Thank you, Zen. My furnace just kicked on, so I don't know if you can hear that, but uh, yeah, it's, it might be a little loud. Um, mountain greenery, what's going on? Good to see you in here. Yeah, the flower horn's doing really well. And I'm beginning to think that this might be a lady. Might be a lady. Maybe. Don't know yet. Gotta wait till uh, she lays some eggs. Or a dozen. Who knows? But the growth rate and uh, body shape kind of looks like a female, but I'm not an expert, so I cannot say for sure. Although, if it is, this is going to be one stunning looking female flower horn, like the best goddamn female flower horn I've ever seen. But this is supposed to be a saltwater stream, right? That's what I labeled it as. Can't tell by the cock. Yeah, and that's the thing. Some female flower horns will still get a cock, you know? Uh, it's more uncommon in the United States, but I have seen it. And the females will still get the long, thin extensions. The only way you can really tell, like with any large Central American cichlid mostly, is uh, you got to wait till they uh, are mature enough to start spawning. And uh, you can look at their vent. And usually that can tell you. Um, I'm not going to tell you how to do that. That's something you sh should look up if you don't know how. But uh, venting cichlids is how I usually are able to sex them. After they're about a year and a half old, two years. Liquid Zoo Matt, what is going on? And not all males will get a cock. That is also true. I've seen that. But I think it's the growth rate because the females don't get as big. Or don't grow as fast, I think. Because it's not like I don't do enough water changes on here. And it's not like I'm not feeding you enough. I feed you so much food. True dad. Been waiting for decades. Lots of <laughs> those nowadays. 
Oh man, <laughs> that is so fucking true. Uh, Cat sadly cannot make it tonight. She was like, after making dinner, she she was like, yeah, I'm not gonna. She's gonna go to bed and uh, get some sleep. I was like, that's okay. I'm not forcing you to do it. So, no cat this evening. Um, maybe after I do updates, I'll open up the, the panel. If anyone wants to come up. It's been a while since I've done a panel stream. Michael's fish has a toy that it plays with. Yeah, this guy... He has some stuff to keep him active. He's got me, and uh, I, I was thinking about getting him maybe a little ping pong ball, putting it at the top. It'll float at the top of the water. I'll just do that for like a few minutes each day. And when I had an Oscar, the Oscar would like play with it and bounce it. But I didn't keep it in there. I only put it in for like a few minutes. Chicks with dicks. Yeah, baby. <laughs> but the new saltwater tank is fully running with life. Live rock, two fish, some coral, anemones, and an urchin. I think I'll go take you guys over there and we'll go look at the new thingy things. No, I do have my blue lights on, so I'm going to throw on my orange lens kit so that we can see the colors better. Because sometimes our camera does not pick up the blue light very well, and it just blows everything out. Like... Over light oh. very well. Well, YouTube decided to play my video. The live stream. And it just clips on your phone like that. Super easy. I got the Orphic one. It's the 55 milliliter extra large. Because I have three cameras. Uh figured it would be better. Golf balls sink. Did they push them around? It's funny. Oh, okay. I have to try that. Let me get on the Wi-Fi. Make sure that that's working. Oh, and I also did pick up some new coral today. I went to a new fish store uh, called Cuttlefish and Corals. It's in Hillsdale, Oregon. And uh, it's like right outside of downtown. But oh my god, it's so nice. It is so nice. Wish I took pictures, but uh, I'll. Uh, it was my first time going in. I didn't want to bombard them with a camera running all over the place. So I was already like overloaded with the amount of information, corals, and like made the staff was just super friendly and welcoming and nerdy, just like me. <laughs> All right, I'm going to Okay, 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 okay. 
Whoops. Rookie moves. All right, that should be better now. I muted my computer. Uh, we are on mobile. Running around. So there is the anemone. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Hopefully that is fixed by now. But there are the clowns. I forget what they're called. Gina told me what they're called, and I wrote it down, and I didn't remember I think this one's a frostbite, and the other one is a something. Crap. Uh, I wish I remembered. There's our urchin. Huge. Spiky and big. Cat loves this thing, though. Goofy looking. And the anemone... As a baby. Baby an enemy. I put it in as warm. And then uh, I guess it got pissed off. And split itself in half. Uh, with the tank transfer. I got all these little. Uh, Kenya trees. This with some rubble. For them to attach to. They came off of this big ass Kenya tree. And there's also some. Zoanthids and algae, and the biggest motherfucking Aptasia I've ever seen. Look at that thing. Look at that. That's a whole knuckle. Maybe two. Two knuckles, man. Freaking huge. We got a a turbo snail and astria snails, a bunch of those. Uh, there's also a hermit crab. There's one of the hermit crabs. One of the turbos did not make it. Um, but out of like all the minor losses, like that guy didn't make it, and. Uh, I don't think anything... Oh, and the peppermint shrimp didn't make it. But... That's okay. We'll get more peppermints. And down here in the sump... Use flashlights. I ain't got a thing up there. I got the auto top off. Going with the... Oh, there it goes. I poked too big of a hole, so it spews a little bit back out, but it still goes back into the tank. There it goes. Yeah. So as salt water evaporates, um, the salt stays, and the fresh water leaves. So you gotta top it off with new fresh water, not salt water, and uh, that keeps salinity stable, and this tank evaporates so much. I think it's just the amount of water movement and open spaces. But we will... I'm going to hopefully try and make a cover for the filtration area so that can get covered. And then I got a red seed net coming for uh, the top so we're not using cling film. Yeah. And then I should try to make a net or color for, not color, cover for the sump down there. I bought blue colored light strips from Five Below for my sump. It's pretty cool to show off to my fish, I guess. Yeah. This spectrum is, uh, I tried to mimic a full atinic blue. Uh, with 
a good amount of UV and because uh, this light, this is the AI Prime 16 and it's got like six, seven color channels that I can mess with. Um, I'll share you guys my schedule if you guys have a AI Prime. But it looks really good on camera. I'm real. Oh man, that anemone! And these cuttlefish are just so cute, man. They're so friendly. They're always up at the front begging for food. They're like, "Hey, you haven't fed me in the last ten minutes." We also got this uh, red sea zinnia. On the sprag rack, it was attached onto there, so I was just like, oh, I'll just keep it on there. Maybe it'll take over the sprag rack and it'll just like take over the back wall. That would be pretty cool. It'll be a good natural filtration. It grows fast. It'll eat up them nitrates. Nope. Oh, and here's a 55. Looking good as ever. Tiger Barb doing Tiger Barb things. Festivums, festivaling. Rainbows, rainbowing. Killy's not killing anything in here. Uh, he was trying to in the other tank, uh, but I stuck him in here. So now he has uh, earned his spot. In the asshole tank. Well, it's not too bad. It's not like the Jack Dempsey's and Green Terrors that I was keeping. But they're, they're still not the nicest fish. They're still pretty chill. They don't let me keep plants, though. Mainly that guy. He don't let me keep plants. That's my Severum. All right. Cool. 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 No. Every time. Okay. Shell, how's it going? Heading to bed, take care. You have a good evening, Shell. But yeah, that's uh, the new life in the saltwater tank. In the new saltwater tank. I got them from Shanna at 503. And they definitely went to a good home. We love them. And Kat fell in love with that freaking urchin, man. She just loves it. Every day, she's checking on it. Yellowstone, what's going on? Oh, and I fed the anemone for the first time yesterday. And uh, I think he, he was pretty hungry. Because he, like, immediately closed up, ate it all, and it opened right back up. And an enemy's feeding are weird. Going to sleep. Good night, all. Good night, Nano. Take it easy, man. Check out how trippy it looks under your take. <laughs> Well, and I should try to uh, show you guys the pictures of the new corals.
Okay, hold on. I gotta remove. Remove. Alright, hold on. I'm uploading some photos to show you guys of the upstairs tank because it is, um, the lights are off and the corals are closed up. Okay, so first one we got, well, let's start in chronological order. So during the week, I met up with the new reefer, and uh, I think this was last week, too. And a local reefer it got this cool thing. This is a hammer coral, a branching hammer coral, and... Uh, I really like these. They kind of look like an anemone, but they're not. They're a coral. Um, and they're just really cool. Uh, not the hardiest. Not the hardest. But something I'm definitely wanting to get into. Um, and another one that came with that was uh, this Montipora species. Uh, he called it an Aquaman. I don't know what actual species it is, but I do know that it's a Montipora. Oh, and this guy, their genus name is Euphilia Parancora, something like that. I might be completely wrong. I know it's Euphilia. Um, and then some other ones that we got from the tank breakdown from Shanna, were those zoanthids, the little circle guys behind the Monty. Uh, those are eagle eyes, which are pretty cool. Um, these, I believe, are purple people eaters, which are a different type of zoanthid. And the cool thing about zoanthids are you can actually mix and match them together, and they're not really going to harm each other like other corals. Because uh, other corals will definitely sting the shit out of each other and compete for uh, space on the reef. Uh, so you got you do have to manage that. But this coral on the... Let's back it up. This coral on the right at the bottom is looking a little sad. Uh, I'm trying to bring it back. It is a type of zoanthid. Not sure what type. It's still not open up for me yet. But... Uh, just trying to get that algae off of there it is tough. And then a different type of zoanthid. These are bam bams, which are a really nice uh, bright orange in color. Um, and then today, one of the new ones that we got were. Uh, this purple candy cane on the left. I didn't get a good shot of it. Um, it's not fully opened yet. 
but it's got a purple polyp with a green mouth. Haven't seen too many of those. I always see the green candy canes. And so I was like, ooh, yes, finally a purple one. Going in the tank with our green one. And then on the right is a Australian Duncan coral. And it's kind of similar to like a hammer, a uh, torch, kind of. They grow a little bit differently, uh, but pretty much the same care requirements. Um, we also did pick up another SPS coral. This is uh, Montipora, not Montipora, Bird's Nest, some. Still trying to learn a lot of names. Um, But this, I mean, it looks pretty dang good for being a couple hours of being in the tank. That's why I took this picture. Um, polyps are out. They were all dancing in the current. I know I got some pretty strong light in here. Um, and then the last coral we got today was this little, little Recordia mushroom. And uh, it actually came with a little baby mushroom at the bottom so that was a bonus and uh also another cool thing my first like ever breeding thing for saltwater i don't know if you guys recognize anything with your neo caradina shrimp or your caradina shrimp that you might keep in freshwater uh, but this girl is buried and her berries are now little shrimplets underneath her, I don't know the scientific term, her flaps. Um, but it's just really cool to watch that develop. And eventually I would like to see if I can raise them and maybe sell some aquacultured peppermint shrimp. Wouldn't that be cool? But I thought that was really, like, fascinating. I've not heard of many saltwater shrimps breeding. I've heard of sexy shrimps, but not the peppermints. Oh. So, I'm hyped. I got a female. And I do have two of them. And one of them is a little bit smaller and might be a male. So, that's pretty neat. All right, let's go back at the comments. Really want to get some Zoas? You should, man. I love Zoas. They're super easy to keep. I mean, I don't go for the fancy trade names. I just go for, like, ones that look good and ones that um, are just easy to keep. The OG ones, like the Bam Bams, the Eagle Eyes, Purple People Eaters... Twizzlers, uh, Rastas, yeah. Still gonna be a long ass time until I go salty. I know, right? You just go on CO2, you gotta dabble with that science for a little bit and enjoy CO2 while you have it. Enjoy it. CO2 is fun, it's one hell of a drug. For plants. Plants love it, man. They get addicted to that shit. So, yeah, that's pretty much the updates for the tanks. Um,. I do have some stuff coming for the reef tanks from Bulk Reef Supply. And if you guys are going to order anything off Bulk Reef Supply, now is the time. Because they got some killer deals going on. And if you become a preferred reefer, they put free stuff in your shit. They put free stuff in your package. So it's like, free stuff, might as well. 
They sell a bunch of freeze-dried fish foods, like uh, there's freeze-dried copepods, freeze-dried colonis, freeze-dried mysis. Uh, I, I think there's like a bunch of other freeze-dried foods that you can get, and I think they would do really well for a lot of us nano fish keepers. Um, I don't want to feed live all the time, even though live food is like the best thing you can do. Um, I feel like freeze dried is the second best thing. But yeah, if you're gonna order, need some stuff, I would do it. Now's the time. Lots of deals. It is fun. The growth is crazy already, and the pages are still playing Kurgan. Plants. Ah. Oh, you actually got the CO2 going. Where the fuck was the stream, Zen? Of you setting it all up? A heart. You promised. And it gives in the most amount of shit for that. But I'm excited. I got a refill kit for my CO2. It's a little bit different. I use baking soda and citric acid. Uh in a little like two and a half pound thing it's nice it definitely does the trick and i like it because me personally i don't drive everywhere i don't want to have to hassle hauling a big old fucking tank to some place and get it exchanged i'd be like it takes me a couple minutes to dump it out rinse it let it dry out Refill it up with 200 grams of citric acid, 200 grams of baking soda, 300 milliliters of water. Screw the lid on, let it build up pressure. Turn the sucker back on the solenoid, done and done. Easiest goddamn CO2 I've ever had to deal with. Uh, for DIY purposes. And I get about a month and a half between refills when I'm using it fully. Right now, I'm not using it all the time. I've gone like four months without a refill. And I still got like, I'm still in the green. A little bit. I mean, I got a little bit before I got to refill it. but Still in the green pushing 50, 50 bar or PSI or whatever. She failed us. She did. Do not stream. And I did not promise. I don't know. That's not what Steven and Kelly said. Myrtle is in the fine print. <laughs> Jeremy, what's going on? I heard a promise on a stream once. <laughs> it might be time for a little smoke break here in a little bit. Maybe I'll open up the panel. That's a good time to do that. Let's open it up, huh? Let's open it. Uh, thanks. There we go. If I know you, I'll let you up. If I don't know you, I might think twice about it. But then again, I make dumb decisions, and I might still let you up. All right, let's stop. Okay. 
Oh, and I have so many friggin' Xenotoka Deandrei babies. They're not even funny. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. Just keep making more. I have a giant mosh pit. But yeah, Cuttlefish and Corals was a really cool store to go to for the first time. I was really impressed with how clean it is and how clean the tanks were. Like, I normally don't see that kind of cleanness around here. And I'm not trying to shit on the stores around here, but they're, they're not the cleanest. They're a little dusty and musty. You know, all the tanks were like low, so you didn't. Uh, not low, but they were easy to look at. The glass was clean, the tanks were clean. I was telling them how I liked their setup, and they're like, oh my god, it's so dirty. But, and they were pointing at some detritus that was built up in the corner, and I'm like, oh lord. You guys. <clears throat> but the staff was really friendly, too. So I think I found my new saltwater spot to go to. Cuttlefish and Corals. It's going to be my new go-to. It is an hour and away on a... Worth it. Totally worth it. Lurking while doing water changes. Hell yeah. And I'm just trying to think of what fish uh, to get for the new tank. I do know I want to keep it nano fish. Because it is only a 2 foot by 18 by 18 tank. But definitely we got to have a Blenny. I was thinking of adding Benny the Blenny in there. Or maybe we get a new Blenny. A different type of Blenny. Maybe a Midas Blenny. Well, we still need an algae eating Blenny, and the tail spot Blenny is a good algae. Georgia B3, how goes it? Man, I'm not sure if anyone else is streaming tonight. I'm pretty sure Vinny's probably still going. That's all right. We're going to be here.
gonna have to go to the dispensary tomorrow. Oh, wow, Malik, Joseph, Sherry, and Craig are all on, too. God damn, it's a busy night tonight. Oh, maybe we'll cut it short then. Who knows? Maybe we'll do that, and then everyone else will just stop streaming, and then we'll all be stuck with no streamers. Maybe I'll hold off. Well, hold off. Yeah, I didn't really check the schedule this week. I just kind of, on a whim, scheduled it for 8.30 on Saturday night. Because that's like the time I got right now. Keep going. Yeah, all right, Matt. How are you? I'm doing good, George. Just chilling, taking a little smoky break, and we'll head back inside and go look at some fish. Oh, and I found out about a new thing today in the saltwater store. Sea apples. They're freaking weird looking. I didn't know what it was at first. I had to ask an employee what it was. But a freaking sea apple. I don't even know what a sea apple is. Yeah, still gotta look that up. I know what a sea cucumber is. I don't know, Zen. They're they're not like freaky. They're just weird. All right, that's all I'm gonna say. All right. Do you want your nighttime pellets? All right, I'll give you your pellets. Oh. This guy gets fed usually once a day, sometimes twice a day, and then sometimes I skip a day. I feed him a scoop. Scoop of food right now at his size for feeding. Seems to eat that within a couple minutes, and there's no leftovers or anything, so... Um. Yeah, the, the sea apples are just weird, man. They're apparently filter feeders, like a clam or something. They're just a weird invertebrate that look like a ball sack hanging off the tank. And they're purple. It's 
straight up look like a ball sack, though. Just saying. They look a little weird. Just got done with the uh, UBIS meeting, Brisbane Club. Had a talk on snails. Cool. A sea sack, you say. Look, I'll I'll Google it and I'll show you. I shall show you a sea apple. There it is. Let's see right here. Ah, uh, hell. This is a sea apple. No, oh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to make it bigger. Yeah, they're a little weird, man. They're a little weird. They have these freaky freaking uh, arm things that come out when they're filter feeding. And then when they catch stuff, they bring it into their mouth. funny looking guys uh, but the one I saw today was like this it was purple with the orange dots Ugh. tell me that doesn't straight up look like a nut sack in your fish tank It's half cute, half creepy. Yeah. It's one of them ugly cutes. Yeah, there's a good picture of him uh, feeding. Oh, there's a cool one. Kakumba. Kakumba. weird photos courtesy of Google Lament Valley Aquarium Society tomorrow dang that sounds fun wish I could go they're related to sea cucumbers then I guess so. I haven't really looked into them that much. So I will do the research uh, in the middle of the night when I should be sleeping, uh, learning about taxonomically what family and where how they're related to different things and where they come from. And yeah, I like learning all that weird shit. But yeah, that was the, one of the weird, cool things that I saw. And the store had so many cool fish and nano fish, like little nano fish that I can get for my tank. And I'm just like, I want to get so many fish, but I got to take it slow. All right. I'm waiting at least a month, maybe two months till I put fish in the new tank because it just like brand new setup. I just took everything from the old tanks and stuck them in the new tank. All the live rock, all the filter media, fish, the coral, the inverts. Yeah. All went in there. Except for the Zoas that were on frag plugs. I stuck those in my 10 gallon because I'm going to put them on my Zoa rock. I got three different colors on there right now. So... I'll have three more to add. I'll get a good collection of them.
freaking weird. Hmm. Yeah, most of the tank lights are shutting off for now. This one's not on a timer. I bet you can tell by all the algae and crap that's growing on the back. But gives me an excuse to come down here twice a day, at least, to turn the lights on and off. Because without that, I would be getting lazy, man. I would. I would get lazy. Painted an isopod. Hell yeah. Isopods are cool. And there are some really neat isopods out there. Oh, I was also thinking about doing a video on how I test my saltwater tank weekly. Show you the whole process, either time lapse or with voiceover or whatever. Because some, some tests are faster than others. None of them more, take more than like 15, 20 minutes uh, for the longest one. But hopefully that's going to change soon. Um uh, Depending on what uh, test kit you use, um, maybe it'll help you uh, figure out how to do the test properly. Because I, I really try to uh, actually go back and forth with the brand or the company and ask questions about how to properly uh, do that. And I think I've gotten it pretty down to where my results are pretty accurate and they don't sway too far um, between tests and they're in the ballpark of what I'm shooting for so salt tank with some rock coming out the top let's see isopods on the rock would be so cool. you know you can do something like that um, you could get like one of those rimless low boy tanks, like one of those UNS shelf, like those low boy tanks, and then just put some sand, uh, put a little power head in there, put a, some rocks, have the rocks come out the top in the middle, make sure they're not touching the glass or anything. Um, and then you could do like fiddler crabs. Because there are saltwater fiddler crabs. I'm pretty sure you could find some isopods that would do that. Um, never heard of any. But then again, I've never really looked. Um, but yeah, I've seen people do that. You can grow like mangrove tr mangroves. Uh, I don't know if you've seen those little trees but they'll grow out of a saltwater tank. Just look back. <laughs> Chad, did Zenny promise to stream? Well, she didn't. It didn't technically come out of her mouth, but it was implied, okay? It was heavily implied with the acqu acquisition of this new kit. More like we're just giving her crap. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> How's it going, Mark? Does it study for the test? I don't know.
but some of the other tests that I do, most of them, they only take like a couple minutes, if that, to to do, like first put water in, reagents done. Like it's pretty fast on some of them. Some of them they have like a timer where you gotta wait like nine minutes, three minutes, you know. Loose to that. Oh, and we got a new Hannah checker coming in. We got the nitrate high range. And I'm going to test that out on a couple of the freshwater tanks. See if it works. See if it works in freshwater. Because, man, if I can just get a digital number readout in less than a couple minutes, like, I don't have to worry about doing the drops. Just to cut a packet and you dump it in the vial, you shake it, you put it in the thingy, you press a button, boom, you get a number. Like, what? Why ain't the freshwater hobby using these? Like, come on. Screw looking at the dang color chart. Like, is it is it 40? Is it 80? Is it is it 40? 80? Is it 160? I don't know. I just look if it's bright red. If it's bright red, time to do water change. If it's orange, I got another I got another week. Some tanks don't have nitrates, like the uh a little seven gallon with the garamis. I barely get any nitrates in there. But that's because I've got like three inches of substrate in the back and six inches of substrate. Or no, uh, three inches in the front and like six inches in the back. Yeah. God, that sounded terrible in my head now. Sarah is way easier, just saying. But yeah, it would be nice if Hannah made more freshwater checkers. Yeah, they got a couple of freshwater. I'm going, like I saw they had a freshwater low range, but that didn't make any sense. So I'm going to try this, the marine high range on this and test it against uh, my API kit and see how it does. The... Marine high range only goes to 0 to 75 ppm, which, I mean, ideally, we should be keeping our tanks around 40, 50, maybe. I know some people keep them a lot lower. Um, three inches in the front, six inches in the back. <laughs> See, I was waiting for Matt to say something. Want to start a uh, Grindle Worm culture? Yeah! I tried Grindle Worms, and I killed them. <coughs> Although, I think I know the crucial mistake I made. Uh, I think they just got too dry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got too dry. Take what you get, and don't throw it. Yep. Zanny wants a bobbit worm culture. <laughs> oh man, I was when I dipped my new corals today, a bristle worm popped out, and I was like, oh yes, die motherfucker. He was just all squirming in the freaking dip. Like eh, eh. that's why you dip your corals, okay? If you don't know what dipping your corals is, it's where uh you get a thing in a bottle. I use Two Little Fishies Revive. Uh, that's the brand, and the brand is Two Little Fishies, and the actual product itself is called Revive. It's used to heal corals and get bugs off of them, all the creepy crawlies. It's pretty much like a pine tree oil and citrus extract, super all natural, like 
not that harmful. Just don't get it in the tank because it is harmful to inverts. And it will kill off your copepods and bacteria and any clams, worms that you have in your tank. Like, it's just not good. Uh, but, yeah, dip your corals before you put them in your uh, display tank. That at least helps mitigate anything off the bat. Now, it doesn't get everything like Aptasia or... Uh, What's those other ones? Fermented snails. Fermented snails that can't dip. You gotta like either scrape them off or a new trick that I've learned is just slather some super glue gel over them and then they can't filter feed anymore and they just starve and die inside the, the glue. And I'm like, oh shit. Pretty good idea. So I tried that. And it's working. No more fermented snails. They, the only time I got fermented snails is when I got new corals, and then they would be on the plug. Or not new snails, new corals, and they would be on the... Yeah. And so I would just either cut off the old frag plug, or super glue it, cut it, whatever. I had to check the camera mark. Came home and someone put an Xmas gift on the front step. Needed to see who, who it was from, huh? And then baby on the list is the first victim. Yeah, I missed the freaking uh, Guppus meeting last week because I was busy, but it happens. It happens. I think, yeah, the next one will be December, so that'll be the Christmas party. Wonder where it's going to be. Peppermint hot cocoa. Nice. Hello. <laughs> I love how he flares his fins. He gets so angry. Maybe I should show you guys some more. There he is. Or she. Still not sure. Ah. I love how this fish postures. Greg, are you watching this? You better get back. Look at the screen. Chunkers. You are all pissed off. Ah, you are all pissed off. And this fish doesn't have to worry about nothing other than getting water changes and getting fed. Okay, start over. Okay, fine. There he is. See if the camera will come on camera don't fail me now 
washing them out. Man, I I can sit here and just mess with this fish for hours. He is so fun and personable. That is my flower horn for misfit reptiles and aquatics. Homebred in the USA. I'm proud of that. Ain't no import. He is growing nicely. Thank you. Do you plan on breeding any fish or shrimp? Yeah, I do have a couple breeding projects going on. Um... I am right now, I got a colony of breeding Xenotoka Diadrii San Marcos collection or location. Um, they're a cool little uh, live bearer from Mexico. Super easy. Like the easiest live bearer I've ever kept. Uh, I keep them on the floor, no heater, sponge filter, and I feed them flake food and a little bit of frozen food every now and then. Uh, they really do like their greens and bugs. So like bug bites, um, veggie flakes, spirulina flake, uh, brine shrimp, stuff like that. They love. Uh, oh, and also breeding pumpkin neocaridina shrimp. They're like the orange, a different orange variant pumpkin. I like them. Uh, they're really nice. Also trying to breed some CPDs. Um, I got to move those still. I didn't get to that today, but I still got tomorrow. And then we also got um, some Sumurai Garamis growing up in the tank. They're just little babies right now. They're not mature yet, but um, I'm going to change to the scape and make it a black water tank. And hopefully, we'll breed up some little mouth brooding garamis, and I'll show you guys that process. Um, the ones I got are first generation from wild caught samurai garamis. They eat flake. They are super like hardy. Like I'm keeping them in neutral pH water, just keeping them warm, and I'm feeding them multiple times a day, and they're just thriving. Uh, if you do want to breed them, though, and you want to get the colors out of them, I uh, should get the pH down to, like, 5. Um, but my test trips don't go down that far. So i got to get a new thing like that. Love that fish. I know. Right? I love him so much. Color is definitely coming in. Yeah. The reds are still holding off. His golds are coming in, and his pearls are insane. Thank you. Start over. Lazy Susan Mark on the doorstep painting. Don't like flower horns, but he is really pretty. Aw, thanks. He is getting big. Yeah, I'm usually... I didn't like the flower horns, especially the ones I saw around here. They're just your everyday SRD, like totally i don't know what's wrong with the srds i'm seeing but they're not they're not the quality of a fireman's dream and the fireman's dream has the red texas genes in them so they cross the red texas hybrid with something else i'm guessing a golden base um but there's definitely red Texas jeans in that fish. But it's not a pure red Texas. Those fish are different. But they're still hybrids, all right? Hybrids are hybrids. Some people, you know, 
and the hybrid. It's a fish, all right? He's happy, and he makes me happy. I think that's all that really matters. But he's cool. He gets uh, weekly water changes of like 50, 60%. I just drain it down to like here. And uh, yeah. I could do more frequent, less water changes. It would probably be more stable. But right now I've got the, the once a week. Need a couple. Need to bag a couple of plecos, and it's just so hot. Couldn't be bothered. Dang. Crazy fish. Hmm. Maybe we can look at saltwater fish we can get for the nano. I'll show you guys what I was thinking. What I was thinking of keeping. Dang, they got 40% off gobies. What? Let's look at Diver's Den, though. Diver's Den is the way to go. I think yep we're sharing screen all right so off the bat central piggy look at this little dude semi-aggressive with caution max size four inches what that's a cute little fishy I love his little orange eyeballs. Orange eyeball. Oh, they're a flame hawk. These guys are cool. But apparently they eat scrimps. I mean, diet carnivore, yeah. I guess that makes sense. They are carnivore. They would eat shrimp. A mystery wrasse. Oh, he's got a blemish. He's got a little nip in his tail. That's why. That's an expensive fish, though. Just saying. Expensive. Oh, well, what is that? Redhead solar brass. What the? Hold on. Hold the phone. 
Oh, the phone. Looking that up real quick. Man, that's a cool ras. Hmm. Not much. Uh, why is there like no information on these motherfuckers? That is a cool fish. Five inches. Dang. They get too big. We need a 90 gallon. A mimic half black tang. What? Dang, they get 10 inches though. That's right. Tangs get big. Hmm. Oh, pearly jawfish. I do. I was looking at maybe getting one of these for the tank. My tank is forty gallons, forty-five. Oh, I think I'm missing chat. Hubby is going to bed, so I gotta run. See y'all down the tubes. Thanks for streaming and catch your guys later. All right, Zen, have a good night. Take it easy. That'll be good, man. Our row water is good. My jawfish are super cool, they live in the sand. And they dig in the rock. Ooh, a black ribbon eel. Those are cool. I saw one of those at the cuttlefish. Huma huma. Out the bread indigo dotty back. Mm. Not the prettiest fish, though. Not the prettiest fish. Oh, look at that guy. He has two inches. That's a cool little fish. These guys are super cute. I love rabbit fish. But they get too big. Way too big. Especially for my tank. So no rabbit fish. Not till we get at least a 100. Oh, look at these. Freckle face hawk fish. Dang, they get up to nine inches. These suckers get big. He'll definitely eat my scrimps. Oh. They hide they were hiding the best all the way for last. Reef compatible. No. You see that? The big fat no. <laughs> That's funny. They get up to a foot and an inch. 
and a Naso Tang. These guys are cool too. They look like a like a fancy car almost, if that makes any sense. But they also get huge over a foot in length. Ooh, triggerfish. He's purdy too. Look at the reds in the tail. It's like perfectly uh, vertical stripe down the middle of his uh, caudal fin. All right, all right. Let's go look at the the deals, huh? What deals they got? Ooh, a sleeper gold head, Goby. That's cool. Max size six inches. Minimum tank size thirty gallons. Hmm. That's a cool fish. Whoa. A dart fish. Any more dart fish? I like the dart fish. Oh, man. All of these are out of stock. These are in stock, though. That's a cool freaking goby. He almost looks like lemon, but different. In the twin spots. These guys supposedly are not easy to keep. Uh, yeah. Yeah, difficult. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, you know, okay, okay, okay. Guppies? Eh, they're guppies. That one's pretty cool, though. $18 for a single... Blonde tuxedo guppy male. That's a cool looking dude, though. I would take that guy and cross it with uh, maybe a albino female, like one of these. There's the female. I don't know if it's showing up. Nope, it's not. It's not. <laughs> oh, they do have flamingo guppy females. Cross it with the blonde tuxedo male. Boom, there you go. You're making new strains. Becoming the next Luke Roebuck. Or whatever. Just don't mess it up. Keep going. You gotta go for generations and generations. Never give up. Alright, let's look. Nano fish? Let's see what they got. Ooh. I had one of these before. In my 10 gallon. Super cool fish. I loved him. This dude. I don't know. What. How. He did it. But. The one. Hole. That he jumped out of. Was the hole for my auto top off tube. That went into the tank. To refill it up as it evaporated. And it goes down. Into a fresh water reservoir and uh yeah 
um, he did not last long in a freshwater reservoir, and he perished, and it sucked, because that was a really cool fish. I would not mind getting another one. And then this is the Helfrichi. This is a different species, but they also look really cool. Although I think the purples, the purple firefish looks just as good and half the price. And then there's also the, the regular firefish. These guys are also really pretty. I was thinking about maybe trying one of these out because I like their, their, their big tall fins. Man, they don't really have a whole lot of nanofish. No, oh, they have five nanofish. Dang. A Smith's Blenny. I think that's one of them fang blennies. A venomous blenny. Oh my god, look at this thing. That is a face only a mother could love. Only 1k. Was there a fish that was a thousand bucks on there? I didn't see it. Oh yeah, that trigger fish was a thousand bucks. That was crazy. You guys want to show you guys want to see a $10,000 fish? And maybe I'll show you guys a $30,000 fish later. I like looking at the expensive fish, knowing that I'll never own one. It's kind of crazy how much these fish are. Like, nuts. These people. These people. Misfit, what's going on? But yeah, here is probably I, I mean I gotta say this is my personal opinion the ugliest ten thousand dollar fish I've ever seen I'm just saying my I wouldn't not personally but apparently there are captive bred aquaculture Brennan, what's going on? But they're cool. It's a yellow and a purple. What's that make? A yearple. And people are starting to post more videos of uh, their yearples as they grow out. And they still look pretty damn ugly. Now... I'll show you a different one. <laughs> Koi tangs. Koi tangs are freaking ridiculous. Boom, boom, boom. That's insane. Hmm. 
dude, it is nuts. The fish prices I'm seeing online for some of these tangs right now are crazy. So if I switch, here is one. All right, that's thirty-five thousand dollars for a white and yellow fish. I mean, it looks pretty cool. Because if you know what a Scopus Tang, Scopus Tangs look nothing like this. So this is like a weird, naturally occurring um, color morph, I believe. They actually go out and collect these. Like this fish is just, oh my god, I love this. This, the half yellow, the, the blacks, and then like the teals. That's not a bad looking fish, to be honest. But is it worth ten thousand dollars? I don't know. I don't know. There's another one, a little bit less expensive. This is what five grand will get you. Weird looking fish. Oh, there's one a yellow scopus. These are cool. These are cool. And more reasonably priced $3.99. That's not bad. You know, prices of fish are just insane. And I think I'm just going to have to accept it. Oh, look at that. That's a fish I, I might be able to afford. Maybe. By the way, if you ever want to know how you save money on some of these fish, and you see, you got to look up the fish, do your research. But most antheists, um, if you see that they're selling males and females, and the males cost more, just buy a female, be patient, and that female will change to a male. Um, and then you add more females, and he'll be the boss. Uh, not all fish will do that, but I believe most wrasses, antheus, and uh, I think clownfish are the opposite. The big alpha ones are the females. That yellow slash black is neat. It is. I really like the ant the antheus. They're really cool schooling fish, although they're pretty tricky to keep. Ooh, a scribbled angelfish. Look at that thing. Nice. Ooh, a candy basilet. That's a cool fish too. These are a really cool nano fish. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> oh, that's a spider, man. Get the fuck. Bro. A spider just straight up, like, dropped in front of me. Almost touched me. I'm about to freak out. Go on, get going. Keep climbing back up there. Go. Keep going, motherfucker. Now I'm scared. Go, bitch. I don't want to have to deal with the spider. Okay. It was just a little thing, but yeah, I don't like spiders. So, yeah. I really do want to try a basilet one day, but they're also just so expensive. Any one that you find, like the candy basilet, are just expensive because they're the bright, flashy yellow and purple. But they've got other ones that aren't as flashy, but they're still like 130 bucks, 160. But 
Let's look at a conditioned fish. Oh. Look at that. Flasher wrasse, man. God dang. And saltwater fish are insane. Let's just look at tangs. Oh, a black long nose tang. Achilles crossed with a white cheek? What? That's cool. Origin Hawaii? Man, I thought, thought there weren't no fish coming out of Hawaii. That's a weird looking one, for sure. Hybrid, a brand, bristle tooth. Hmm. Lots of hybrid tangs, man. A blue face koi scopus. Hmm. Summer tank. Purple and yellow hybrid. Oh, this one's cheaper than at the that other site. These are only uh, sixty five hundred instead of ten. Ooh, look at that one. That's a pretty fish. Yeah, it's a cool one. Freaking sure. Oh, whoever takes these photos is does a very good job. Yeah, I think we. Uh, oh, look at that! A barcode gem tank sold out, but. That is crazy. I really do like that. I per definitely would prefer that over the regular gem tank. These guys are cool. The sail fins. They straight up turn into a dinner plate, though. That's an Achilles. Achilles white cheek hybrid. A purple. Ooh, a Hawaiian chevron. Nice. True Hawaiian yellow tang. Nice. Oh, I love looking at fish. It's uh, definitely fun. Whoa, what is that? A white cap gooby? That's crazy. That's a weird looking fish. How freaky pair, a freaky trio. Wonder what if dude, I wonder what they have. Oh, they do. 
the interruptus angelfish these are really cool that's a bucket list angelfish of mine for sure i just love the colors and the pattern yeah japan japanese but you know they expansive a conspicuous those guys are cool a flame what for 90 bucks for a flame angel no no way bro 90 bucks for a flame angel somebody come cop that dude like I pressed a button. I just, just trapped on a K at the other site. I could got three on this site for that price. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> what? Dropped 20K at the other site. I could have got three at this site for that price. Dang. Yeah, that's why I like looking at other sites. And uh, Reef Pro, they seem to have pretty good reviews, and they have a pretty nice like website. I guess I don't know much about websites, so I I don't know. Although it's easy for me to manage, and I can't say that for a whole lot of other websites. But I'm just slow. I like the wet spot website really was not with it for the longest time until they updated it. It's a lot better now. But uh, work in progress is always websites. I'm sure Matt knows all about that shit. Let's see how long we've been going here. Almost uh, two hours. <sighs> Big shrimpin', what's going on? Oh, um, Brandon, I don't know if you were here when I was showing them earlier, but. I got some new corals today. New corals. Uh, here's one of them. I got this new Australian Duncan. It's got like a green skin with the purple polyp. I got this bird's nest SPS. And he seems pretty happy. Also picked up a recordia mushroom. Well, Kat picked that one out. She picked out the mushroom and uh, that purple candy cane on the left. And then I picked out this guy in the Duncan. Because I love Brennan's Duncan. And he's not going to frag it. He's adamant about not fragging it. So I'm just like, well, shit. Find it myself. So I found it myself. And it was buy three, get one free. So I was just like, why not? Why the hell not? The hammer is doing really good. And the new fish, new saltwater fish, 
Their lights are off. I guess it might be time to head out of here soon. Fishes are going to bed. Other people are probably going to bed. It's almost 10.30 here on the West Coast. Um, so, we'll hold out for a little bit. At least to 10.30, maybe. It's only 10.22, so you got eight minutes. Keep, keep the chat going. George will go live. Perfect. Um, get that scheduled, and I will drop your link in the chat, George. Just get it scheduled on uh, on there and let me know. I'll go look right now. I shall look right now. Oh, and my, I haven't gave an update on my new rainbows. They are doing amazing, getting fat and sassy with each other. They love to chase each other, little, little buttholes. No, that's not what I wanted. Urge. Urge. You got it going. I think I see it scheduled for November nineteenth, ten fifteen PM. That will have to do. Heist. George RB three. Scuba Steve! God damn you, Scuba Steve! Don't order it. Wait, hey, dude, no rush on it, man. No rush. All right, take your time. I am patient. And it's a shirt, so, like, really, no rush about it. But. Can't wait to get it. I'm going to be repping that shit all over the streams and fish clubs. Love repping my fish fan merch. I don't have a whole bunch. But the ones I do got, I try to wear out whenever I go to fish places. Or even just general public. Never gave me his info, so I'm gonna hook you up. All right. Aqua Gardens, then you have a good night, dude. That and oh, also I forgot to say part part of the update. Um, yeah, don't know how I missed this, but we have a pistol shrimp, too. Uh, it is called the Bullseye Pistol Shrimp. They have, like, a spot on their little abdomen, and then they have bright purple claws. And he's about twice the size of my other pistol shrimp that I have in my other saltwater tank. And he's probably twice as loud with this little snapper thing like he's loud i thought my other one was loud no this one's loud 
glad it's not in my bedroom. All right. I think that's going to be me. I'm out of here. Um, we almost did a full two hours. Thank all of I thank all of you that made it this week. Um, I believe next week Brennan should be doing game night. I'm going to try to make it this time. Um, I couldn't make it last time, but this time I'm going to try to make it. Because um, game night is fun. And if y'all ain't over there during game night, I don't know what y'all doing. Uh, but all of these names in here I usually see in game night. So uh, Take it easy. You know. Rest up, enjoy your weekend, have fun with your fishies, um, and look out for those online deals on some of your favorite uh, online fish stores, you know, they're starting to roll out early, and uh, yeah, cop those deals, free shit, free shit, we all love free shit, okay. I think I've talked enough. I'm out of here. Peace. See you guys in the next one. Either it's a video or a live stream. Uh, yeah. Bye. No.